Mmm, another Ebola outbreak. Ah well, we'll all just do what we do every time there's an Ebola outbreak. Be rational people, not panic, consult virologists and disease control experts about it, and just be normal, rational people. Oh. We have found the witch! May we burn, huh? Burn! So apparently, a new, unknown, and scary plague is come, and it's going to destroy the entire world's population and kill billions of people. How do we know that's going to be the case? I got a gut feeling. How do you know she is a witch? She looks like one! Yeah, 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 yeah. But on YouTube, from comment section to comment section, you'll see scores of medical professionals, all with prestigious degrees from the most respected educational facilities, like Fearmonger College and Clueless University. So, of all our armchair medical professionals and expert news sources that surely care only about informing the public, and not about sensationalism and views in any way whatsoever, how many have actually consulted someone with real qualifications in the field before coming to their conclusions and retelitizing them to others? What is it? It's a dingle hopper. Humans use these little babies to straighten their hair out. Yeah, probably not a lot. Frankly, neither common reaction, those assuming it's nothing to be concerned with, and those saying it's a horrible epidemic bound to slay billions, is a reaction worth bragging about. If you want to know more about Ebola, the initial reaction one should have would be to get informed. Find out what the people who actually are experts in Ebola, microbiology, and disease control have to say. And, as things usually tend to be in the real world, the situation is more nuanced than two extreme all-or-nothing positions where it either has to slay billions or it has to be harmless. So, about this new and unknown plague. Well, well, according to Dr. Diane Griffin, professor of microbiology and immunology, it's the Zaire strain of Ebola. Now, I just so happen to have access to a private chart of Ebola outbreaks from the World Health Organization, and Zaire is the most common strain on the list. And by private, I mean public, but hardly anyone bothers to read it. This is not the first time we've encountered Ebola, and it's certainly not the first Ebola outbreak. In my case, it's also not the first time I've researched the virus. That was many years ago. If you'd actually like to become better informed about Ebola, I've included several links to the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization in the description box below this video. I've also included a couple relevant news articles and an older piece from one of my previous studies. Most people's perception on diseases and the like are usually dismissal or panic, and that's the reaction some people have to medical research as a whole. Unfortunately, in some subjects, ignorance kills in a literal sense. Suppose we have the following scenario. A laboratory is working on a cure for an airborne disease, and an angry mob of people that are upset the disease was brought to their nation start forming a protest outside of the research building. The protest turns into a riot, and people break into the building to destroy the test samples. However, not knowing how to properly dispose of the samples, someone decides to destroy one of the samples by breaking the container it's in. That could turn into an unpleasant situation as a direct result of fear, panic, and ignorance. Due to blind zeal to remove the disease, they've given it opportunity to spread. There are many afflictions that could be heavily limited if the population was less ignorant about public health and didn't take actions out of ignorance that so often countered their own interests and own safety. You know something interesting? If the news says 2,000 people will die of HIV today, nobody panics. But if it's 2,000 people will die of Ebola today... Well, then everyone loses their minds! Perception is reality, isn't it? We do so value our plan and the security of the familiar and the status quo. I have on numerous occasions encountered anti-medicine and anti-research attitudes. I've been accused of applying the satanic mark of the beast to people, and I've had people suggest that we should evolve disease immunity without medicine and various similar stances. But, as soon as another disease scare comes around, and this isn't the first, I remind you, many, though not all, switch to saying, Please, Mr. Scientist, do something! I've been pushing for better understanding of microbiology, better disease control, a better medically educated public, and various related reforms for a while. In my position, I have to say... Now? You care about Ebola now? What about the last 20 outbreaks? Were they just not big enough? You oppose attempts to cure diseases that kill people by the millions! Oh, how much more money I would be making off of YouTube if I preyed upon people's ignorance and made a video yelling about how we're all going to die horribly. Fire and brimstone and all that. Oh noes, we're all going to die. There, do I get my 50 million views yet? Here's a cute cat picture. Go nuts with a video sharing on social media. Maybe one of these days there is going to be some plague that wipes humanity off the face of the earth. And if I'm still around when that's happening, I'll probably have the same reaction. If people hadn't blocked our medical research at every turn because they were afraid the people trying to cure HIV would make a mind control death ray, maybe the situation wouldn't be as bad as it is. But I digress. Now let me tell you what's going to happen. For the time being, while people are afraid of Ebola, and at least superficially care about the body count, most will be okay letting the evil scientists work their fancy cure voodoo magic. 
And when the media won't talk about it anymore, because it doesn't get the views that it used to, they'll switch to the next big thing that keeps people's attention and brings in views, and Ebola will be left by the wayside. How do I know this? Because this new and unknown disease is neither new nor unknown to me. In fact, we've had potential lines of research and a treatment for EHF for some time now. And once no one cares about Ebola anymore, many of the same people will go right back to whining at people like me for playing God when we create cures for diseases. I, for one, hold the following opinion. People want me to do everything for them, and what they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. And as a final note I'd like to add, even if I was much more concerned about Ebola than I am, it wouldn't make panic okay. As someone whose life has been in harm's way before, take it from me. Panic is for peons, calmness is for kingpins. I'm still alive thanks in part to my ability to remain calm and rational even in severe pain. Grace under pressure. Calmness of mind. Words I encourage you to live by, gentlemen. They'll serve you as well as they've served me. I'll see you next time, YouTube.